Howdy folks, and welcome back to our North Country adventure. This episode picks up where we last left you, about halfway up the infamous Dalton Highway, where we've camped at the Galbraith Lake BLM Campground. It's called the Hover Breakfast. Yeah. We had an ambitious plan today, so another quick breakfast of coffee, pre cooked sausage, and egg bites would have to hold us over until we could make Dead Horse, where we plan to hit the buffet at the Aurora Hotel. How did the little hover method work? I think it's going to do just fine. It warmed it right up. Mm hmm. Today, we were met with low, moody Alaskan clouds instead of that rare sunshine we'd been enjoying the past few days. Soon, visibility was down to 100 yards, and we picked our way through the road maintenance, mud, and thick fog as we made our way along the north slope. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Yeah. Are those still hot? Yeah. Did that save you last night? Thankfully, the worst of the fog lifted after about 100 miles of travel, and we began to keep a sharp eye out for some of our favorite Alaskan wildlife, known as the muskox, or hippie buffalo as we jokingly call them. And as if on cue, these otherworldly creatures appeared on our horizon. These stocky, long-haired arctic animals were built for the world's harshest environments, with bulls weighing up to 800 pounds and standing as high as 5 feet at their humped shoulder. While both male and females grow imposing horns, the males have a much thicker set of headgear, which comes in handy during the rut, or mating season, where they fight for dominance over a harem of females. With four inches of thick horn and another three inches of heavy skull, these guys are the definition of hard-headed and often take 15 to 20 high-speed collisions from up to 50 yards apart to determine who is the head bull. <laughs> when threatened by predators, these family-oriented herds have adapted to form a wall or circular fortress depending on the number of attackers and place the weakest of the herd in the center for protection. Wolves and bears have to think long and hard before attempting to attack in this situation. Even being within striking distance can be dangerous for predators since these fierce animals often sally forth from their circle and attack when the opportunity arises. While much of the Arctic wildlife tends to sit out the winter in hibernation, these tough beasts live in the wide open, relying instead on their dual layer of insulating fur, an inner kiviet which is warmer than wool and softer than cashmere. When this layer is shed during the spring, it's actually collected from the tundra to be made into sweaters, scarves, and mittens. While this is a native range for the muskox, the entire Alaskan population was wiped out by the early 1900s due in part to years of unregulated fur trade. Thankfully, in the 1930s, efforts were taken by the U.S. government to reintroduce this majestic animal, and 34 animals were relocated from Greenland to build a new herd. After over 90 years of conservation efforts, about 5,000 muskox call Alaska and its surrounding islands home. There aren't many animals in the world that carry themselves with such confidence in one of the most dangerous places on earth. We were both amazed and thankful to see these old friends on our second trip up the Dalton. We're 
porcupine. <laughs> Not long after our muskox encounters, we found another incredible arctic traveler, the caribou. While we had seen a few herds scattered about during our two weeks of exploring Alaska, none of our sightings were quite as impressive as this. Alaskans rely on the 32 different caribou herds, numbering about 750,000 animals for sustenance, and the first archery hunt had just begun as we arrived in the outskirts of Dead Horse. Funny enough, the hunters were pushing some of the wiser caribou towards civilization for protection. In this case, right into the tundra surrounding Dead Horse, where we happened to be driving and filming. Have you ever seen a caribou swim? Well, <laughs> we hadn't until now. We watched several plunge into the river and then run straight for us. Fun fact, you may have heard these members of the deer family called reindeer. And while I'm sure Santa would prefer these elegant wild breeds, reindeer are in fact the domesticated cousins in the family when it comes to Alaskan definition. However, just so you're thoroughly confused, elsewhere in the world they're called reindeer, wild or domestic, it's the same name. Adult bulls like these can weigh up to 350 and even sometimes up to 400 pounds, while females average between 175 to 225 pounds. They're the only member of the deer family where both the male and the female grow antlers. Caribou are known to migrate over 400 miles during their yearly travels. In the late spring, they head for windy coastal areas and mountain ranges to avoid the insects and heat. Then, in the fall, spread out to the lower areas to feed on willow leaves and mushrooms to bulk up for winter. After an exciting last few northbound miles, we arrived unceremoniously in Dead Horse, Alaska. Now to be fair, this is one of those moments where you have to remind yourself that overlanding isn't about the destination, but the journey. If you begin this trip expecting the end of the Dalton to grant you some sense of accomplishment, you've already missed the point. The Dalton experience is found in every mile going north and south, not necessarily here at its halfway mark. but. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and we've learned to make ourselves at home just about anywhere we find ourselves. And so, we jumped in line with the oil field workers at the Aurora Hotel Buffet and settled in for an eclectic lunch while taking in the um, scenery. What else did you get? I got salad. You got a salad? Getting all healthy on us? Mm -hmm. Well, there's three and right over there, Caroline. I'm going to grab one for your sandwich. And whenever the day comes, it comes. What'd you get? This. Oh, snap. And Dad got the coffee. I got the coffee. There's a bear walking around out here somewhere. Really? Really. Let me know to look around when you get out there. Yeah, they're just gonna walk them out. Must steal your ice cream. The bear comes to all lured out with ice cream. They have the toasty in there. Yeah. It was how long it was. <laughs> Until I came out here on the bird. <laughs> oh, I see a deer. I saw a caribou. Drop it. <laughs> No trip to Dead Horse is complete without a visit to the combination general store, hardware supply, and post office where our daughter Caroline got to send off a postcard to family back in Tennessee just to say hello from the northernmost point by vehicle in the United States. Hi. May we get a postcard stamp, please? Can you show me your postcard? Okay. 
I'll take that and it'll go out to Cool. Thank you. Nice job. Good job. Nicely done. We didn't know we were going to be open on Saturday. I was like, oh, it's for the crush. Oh, cute. Thank you. You guys have a great day. You too. We also join hundreds of others by leaving our mark on the growing sticker wall just outside. So be sure and keep an eye out for the Lifestyle Overland Topo Bear if you're in the area. Now, if you're wondering why we didn't take the shuttle the last few miles to Prudhoe Bay proper and touch the Arctic Ocean, we actually already did that back in 2018 and felt that that was enough for us for now. Plus, at $80 a head for a ride past oilfield equipment to a beach lined with rusty drums, let's just say we weren't too enthusiastic about waiting for a scheduled time slot. Maybe next time though. Now, it was time to top off with some of the most expensive fuel in the United States. Somewhat ironically, a mere stone's throw from an oil field pumping hundreds of thousands of gallons of crude oil southbound. At $8.12 a gallon, this was the most painful but rewarding fill up in a very long time. And yes, I know my European friends will chime in here, but it's all relative, right? Our window for Alaskan exploration was quickly coming to a close, and so we still had a long day of travel ahead of us to finish this road and begin our trek south for a meetup with some friends in central Alaska. All right, ladies. That means the Dalton is done for the second time. Actually, I should rephrase that one and a half times because we still got to go the other way dead horse the dead horse experience does not define the Dalton if you allow it to define the Dalton you'll find it a letdown think of dead horse as the halfway mark because you have to turn around and drive it all back the other way and it's a phenomenal ride y'all I had forgotten how beautiful it was. And to be fair, our first trip through, it was just raining so much that we didn't get to see a lot of the natural beauty that is along this route. But I don't know. I've always said if you have to choose between the Dempster and the Dalton, choose the Dempster. But I don't know. There's just so many beautiful places along this route. It's a toss up, at least today. I guess we'll have to go run the Dempster again next and figure that out but feels good. We're tired though. We've been making some ground and now we got to boogie south even harder. So let's go. So there's this trail that leads to, to a mountain. Yeah. Can I make like a fox sitting on the mountain? What you working on? I'm making a junior ranger park. This hole in skies, yeah, I keep wasting my time wondering of all the places I could be. I am not who I was in the dreams we dare to dream when we are young. One day we wake up and we become something different. We are the sums of our decisions fruit of our ambitions, a grain of sand, a drop in the ocean, oh what a trying ocean. Lately these days I can't help but getting this feeling I am sinking, and the ground beneath my feet is starting
my love can you hear me can you hear me see my heart is strong but my will is He's missing you around Missing you around But I won't let it weigh me down Oh, this heavy heart is missing Well, it's been another long day, but well worth it. We've been on the trail since 8 a.m. It is now 11.30 p.m. And we have returned back to the place we camped two days ago, positioning ourselves so that we can get up and make another cannonball run first thing in the morning to meet up with Craig and his daughter, so that we can go on a couple more awesome, lesser known, lesser known Alaskan trails, but we're exhausted. We thought we were gonna have kind of a relaxing trip up here with three whole weeks to explore with, and then COVID ate our margin, just gobbled it up. So we're making as much time as we can, but it's awesome. I absolutely love it up here, guys love it if you haven't subscribed already be sure and hit that button and the notification bell so you can join us on the next leg of this adventure and if you really love what we do head to lso.link forward slash support where you can help keep these adventures going while getting all kinds of bonus content like gps information ad free videos as well as a look behind the scenes until next time remember to stay curious and leave it better than you found it